Hello, my name is Harith Gattamanagu. I am a senior solutions architect here at AWS. Welcome to getting started with AWS web series. This video is a follow up to a previously published service overview. In this video, I will be discussing some typical architecture patterns where AWS WAP is used and look at several rule configuration patterns leveraged by many AWS customers. First, I'm going to talk about web applications. If you look at this diagram, this is a common setup where a customer would use Route 53 service to resolve their DNS before they can connect to an Amazon CloudFront distribution. Amazon CloudFront, our content delivery network, is configured here to deliver dynamic content from a highly scalable application load balancer and deliver static content from our object storage, Amazon S3. For security benefits, we often see customers adding these resources as Shield Advanced Protected resources. Shield Advanced Protection helps these resources to protect from distributed denial of service attacks. In this scenario, a global WAF is typically used with Amazon CloudFront and a regional WAF is deployed to the application load balancer. When you use AWS WAF with Amazon CloudFront, your WAF rules run in all AWS Edge locations located around the world closer to your end users. Customers use regional WAF to secure their origins like application load balancers here. This would selectively allow desired traffic or only accept well-formed connections from CloudFront Edge locations. For serverless applications using Amazon API Gateway, customers create a regional API endpoint in the same region as their AWS resources and then associate that with a CloudFront distribution using AWS WAF and Shield Advanced Services in front of it. This allows us to create custom WAF rules designed to protect API Gateway. For example, implementing rules that protect that API gateway endpoint from brute force attacks or writing custom rules that only allow requests with certain specific header values. Lastly, protecting on-premise applications. Customers can use a combination of Route 53 and CloudFront to protect and route traffic to on-premise resources. They place CloudFront in front of an on-prem application and then use AWS WAF rules to secure their applications. If you wish to move some infrastructure to the cloud and still be protected, uh, it is also possible to route traffic to application load balancers and then target on-premise resources over a transit gateway or a direct connect. So this way you could achieve a hybrid infrastructure setup. In this case, WAF would sit in front of an application load balancer. Now that we see an example architecture patterns where WAF is used, let's take a look at a typical web ACL configuration. Please understand that this configuration you see on the screen by no means is the best way to configure rules for your specific application. I'm using this configuration as an example to demonstrate how different rules can be used together. Before we begin, AWS WAF rules are inspected in an order based on the priority. AWS WAF rule defines how to inspect web requests that come in and define what action to take when a request matches the inspection criteria. The rule action can be allow, block, count, or respond with a CAPTCHA challenge. With the rule action set to count, AWS WAF counts the request but does not actually allow it or block it. What it means is when the rule action is set to count, WAF continues the request processing for the remaining rules in the web ACL. So, however, you can insert custom headers into the request or you can add labels uh, that other rules below the uh, rule that is set to count can match. That being said, uh, let's dive into my example configurations. Uh, Customers typically tend to use reusable rule groups like allowed list and block traffic uh, block list at the top. Uh, these are your reusable rule groups that we can be reused across the web ACL. Uh, allowed list 
tend to contain your trusted IPs, known user agents, requests that come in with secret headers. These are your trusted partners, uh, and this is where you would also add monitoring tools. The block list typically contain blocked countries, risky user agents, some combination of HTTP parameters that you don't want to interact with your application. After a low list and block list, uh, customers tend to add Amazon manage rules. Uh, Amazon IP reputation list is being used here. After this, this is a IP reputation list rendered by Amazon threat research team. After this, I have a common rule set which covers common attacks um, seen on the web. This is the most popular rule group. Uh, this protection provides uh, security against exploitation from a wide range of vulnerabilities, including those described in the OWASP top 10. Uh, consider using this rule group for most of your AWS WAF uh, configurations. Then uh, we have bot control rule set which can be selectively turned on using scope down statements uh, on some parts of your web application uh, for cost optimization. This native rule group can detect and block common and targeted bots seen on the web. I'm selecting these and uh, turning them into count. Um, whenever you get started with count, uh, we don't take any action, but it will generate metrics and labels on top of it. After Amazon Manage Rules, I start to do some customization here. I'm using AWS WAF labels to take desired rule action. So when a rule matches a web request, the rule, if the rule has labels defined in it, AWS WAF adds a label to the request. And rules that are present after this start to see that label and can take uh, action by matching against them. Um, that is exactly that is being done here. As the previous bot control rule group is set to count and uh, is being asked to generate a label on verified bots. And then I have this allow good verified bots uh, rule that is matching on it and selectively allowing it. Then after this, I have a rate limit rule uh, and I'm taking a capture action. This presents a puzzle to test uh, if the end user is really a human. And after this, uh, I have ATP rule set. Uh, this is to track multiple account takeover activities, um, including low and slow attacks and fraud detection in general. Uh, this is, I mean, I'm doing something similar after this by adding uh, stolen credentials a rule to check for a label generated by the ATP rule set and redirect it to another page. At the bottom, uh, I am adding a read based rule uh, designed to protect the availability of the application. For example, if you if the threshold of the read based rule is set to 2000, then this rule will block all IPs that are making 2000 requests in the rolling five minute period. AWS web goes beyond managed rules or custom rules that you add. Uh, AWS security automation templates uh, is a popular solution and a configuration used by many of our customers. Uh, it uses wider AWS ecosystem for detections and uses AWS web for mitigation. This solution is to complement the existing AWS WAF rules and is not seen as a replacement. The solution also provides LO list, block list, native SQL injection and cross-site scripting protections, API gateway based honeypots, uh, which is an API you can plant in your application where no human actor would touch and parts that would scrape your website would go uh, touch it and get caught in it, kind of like a honeypot. This solution also offers bot detection based on your logs. Uh, you can have a simple Lambda function that deployed by this solution that can actively parse your logs um, and look for anomaly or top targets by running some SQL queries on the uh, logs. The solution also provides IP reputation list from spam house or tar nodes that can be imported to block request at the edge as well.
Thank you. Hope this service over you provided was helpful. Our documentation posted in the links has more description on this topic and I recommend it strongly for further reading. Thank you for your time and happy cloud computing from all of us here at AWS.